start kissing it. <laughs> I'm working on a SpaceX Starship that can take off vertically, belly flop down, and land vertically again. I started this project by tackling the Starhopper first, which gave me a lot of insight into the control of these types of hovering vehicles. My Starhopper used two counter-rotating brushless motors to house inside the body, and a couple control vanes actuated by micro servos to vector the thrust. This worked okay, but I want even more performance. And if I want to even attempt the Starship's belly flop maneuver, I'll need much more control. Let's take a look at how I tackled this problem. Here we are in SolidWorks, which I used to design all the parts for this vehicle. It's about 33 inches tall and 5.5 and inches in diameter. At the bottom, I've got two mini quad motors with 5 inch propellers that'll be powered by a 4 cell LiPo battery. Each motor pivots on one axis, so you can see this motor will give pitch control, and the other will give roll control. I made sure to space them out enough so the rotor disc planes will never intersect. Moving up, I've got a servo bulkhead where two servos for thrust vectoring are mounted, and two for the rear flaps are mounted. At the top, I've got an avionics bulkhead to mount all my electronics, and then the nose cone with integrated servo mounts and canards. All of these parts can be 3D printed and essentially slide together over these 3mm carbon spars that make up the body. My hope is to leave the main body open to give good airflow to the motors at the bottom and allow it to fly better in the wind. I threw all the parts on my 3D printer and got to work assembling the vehicle. Everything went together pretty easily with some minor modifications due to print tolerances here and there. I made each subassembly and then slid them all together on the carbon spars and then I used hot glue to pin everything in place. Again, for this project, I'm using my custom flight controller that you can build and program yourself for projects just like this. I kind of rushed through the build, so I just wanted to take a second here to give it a up close look and see what we got here. At the bottom, I got my, I think they're 2350 KV mini quad motors on 4S. Um, these are all hooked up with the control linkages to the servos at the servo bulkhead right above. Um, same deal with the control services. And then I got all my wires running up the body um, to the underside of the nose cone here. The battery goes in there. And then the actual entire nose cone assembly uh, comes off. I just sort of have Velcro that keeps it in place when I'm flying. But this whole assembly comes off. And then all of the electronics are in there. You can see the ESCs on the right side flight controller on the left, receiver on top, and the uh, canard servos are just integrated into the nose cone itself. All right, build done. I spent a little bit of time working on code and getting all the mixing configured for this vehicle and now everything is actuating properly. In takeoff or hover, the control surfaces are fixed and the only things that move and are stabilized are the thrust vectoring motors. This will allow me to take off and fly up to high altitude just like the real Starship. In my second flight mode, the control surfaces begin to try to stabilize the vehicle based on my radio input. These types of control surfaces are interesting because they don't work like conventional airplane control surfaces. Normally, ailerons on a wing deflect the airflow over the wing, creating differences in lift and hence control forces and moments that roll the plane. These control surfaces actuate into the airflow, sort of like how a skydiver moves their arms and legs to maneuver around. I've mixed them to my radio input so that I can get pitch control, roll control, and yaw control during the skydive maneuver. So basically when I need to pitch the vehicle up, I'm gonna fold these rear surfaces up as far as they can go and the forward surfaces are gonna go down. And then when I flip it on its side, you see this has more area and this has less effective area. So that's gonna cause the tail to sink out and give me, give me my pitch up. And then if I put these back in their normal position, I have them with a little bit of dihedral and you'll see that here and I'm hoping that will work to sort of stabilize the roll axis in the free fall 
um, just like dihedral on an airplane. So if uh, it rolls this way, it sees more effective area on this side um, when it's side slipping and it'll uh, create a greater force on this side and restore it to the center. We're gonna take it up for some of the first flight tests, try and tune the controller a little bit. I haven't really figured out landing gear, so I'm just gonna be grabbing it and holding it in the air and just letting it hover and then I'll grab it whenever I'm, I'm done with the test because balancing is a little bit of a problem at the moment, especially in the grass. These flights are just with some starting control gains that I set. Uh, they're working pretty well for the first set of tests, but yaw control is not very good, so I'm progressively increasing the yaw gains. So we just flew it and uh, a couple changes I need to make. Um, the yaw response is not very good with just the differential on the two motors. And you might have noticed when I, when I tuned the gain too high on the differential, the tail started wagging a little bit. And that's mainly because the structure is not really as strong as I expected it to be. It's got a little bit of flex. So when those motors are down there torquing, they're basically spinning the bottom and not the top, and that leads to a lag in the controller, and that's not good. So in order to get a little bit more yaw performance, I'm gonna have to see what I can do about stiffening up this whole structure um, so it can't twist like that. I tried getting some more torsional strength by running string diagonally around the body, but that didn't help much because I couldn't get enough tension. I ended up doing what I was hoping not to do, which was covering the outside of the body with some foam to strengthen it. This worked well to stiffen the structure, but now the vehicle will probably be more susceptible to wind. I spent some time inside tuning the yaw gain now that we got the body panels on here, but uh, this will be the first real free flight and hover without any assistance. So let's see how it goes. I decided it was time to go from the Mark 1 control services to something more like SN8 and then gave it a quick paint job before taking it out to the field. Needless to say, it was a little windy. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Open your mouth and start kissing it. <laughs> oh my god. It destroyed the landing pad. This first flight is just a test of the GoPro I duct tape on the side wouldn't affect it too much before a high altitude attempt. Alright, here we go. Belly flop.
For most of these flights, I kept a pretty high idle throttle during the belly flop just to make sure I can maintain control. As flights go on, I use less throttle during descent though. This one is probably my favorite flight with smooth transition between flight modes. I still need to work on figuring out a trajectory that lands me just about where I took off from, but I was battling the wind quite a bit. the last one for real <laughs> I think I ran out of battery <laughs> in there. Uh, this guy just pulled out. I think I can fix that. Um, servo bulkhead is a little bit disfigured. And uh, I think the nose cone is fine. It's mainly just the servo bulkhead and the motor mount back here on the bottom. I think it'll fly again. Since this video is getting pretty long, I'll save the repairs and more testing for another video. If you enjoyed this, definitely consider subscribing or sharing this video. It helps me out a ton. I'm going to go get some replacement parts in the printer. See you next time.